Here we go. This is our house, and here's our beehive, and here is our piece of tuma, this purple ball. And it shoots out a beam of tuma beneath it and above it, all up in the sky. And we are following the shittas of the Rav. Um, so basically, wherever you move this tuma uh, up and down, it will just move around with that tuma above and below it. All up in the sky, all the way to the ground. Now, here's the thing about the barrel, the beehive. Um, when you place it underneath the beehive, generally speaking, Tomo will bypass the beehive. See, it does not go in. And continue up above the beehive. But inside the beehive is okay. That is the general way. That's mission number one. So the Tomo is underneath the beehive, uh, only above and below the beehive, the Tomo itself, not the beehive itself, that's Tahar. Uh, anywhere else not can I get the Tomo will be tar inside the house of summer. Great. Uh, that's mission number one. Uh, hold on. If you place it in the house, let's place it into the house. So only the house is tummy. Was, the the Tomo has no way to leave. It needs some kind of a oh hell doesn't have an oh hell to take it out. And underneath the beehive it cannot come out because it's too low. Less on the tefach. This black line here is a tefach. And into the beehive is also okay because again the tumma doesn't um, have a way to get into the beehive. It just skips it. It bypasses it. If the tumma is um, above the beehive, it's the same thing. That's um, it bypasses it going down. And if it's inside, so now everything becomes tummy. Why? Because uh, the tumma spreads out inside the beehive. It leaves the beehive up and down. And so that's what creates this box going up. Not box, I guess it's a box shape. And below it. And because it's going up inside the house, so just Tuma's going up inside the house and then it spreads out inside the house itself. Okay? That is Mishnah number one. Mishnah number two is talking about where the beehive is above a tefach. So now let's see what the rules are. When this is when this is Tuma is underneath the beehive, so now um, it does have a way to spread out underneath it, so it fills up underneath, and it fills up inside the house. And because this tumma is over here, just like regular tumma will bypass the beehive, so too this big amount of tumma now bypasses the beehive. Inside is still tahar. The same thing would be true if this was above the beehive. It would be also everything because, again, it goes underneath. Once it gets underneath, it spreads out, and then it's able to spread, go back up in that giant shape. But again, it goes inside. Uh, if it's in the beehive itself, everything is tummy because, again, it can go down, spreads out. It already spread out inside the beehive, but it spreads it even further uh, underneath because it can go all the way under this wall and then goes up and into the house. And when it's in the house itself, um, everything is tummy except for in the beehive. It has no way to get in. Okay, that's mission number two. <sighs> mission number three puts the beehive back under the tefach. It changes it to the other kind of beehive. Now, I don't it used to be, it's supposed to change the, the way it looks, but you're not going to see it change, but I just changed it. So now it is that other kind, the Pahusa type. The Pahusa type is much stronger. It locks Tuma from going anywhere. So now when it's underneath, oh, one second, I raised it too high. Put it down, below a tefach. Um, when the Tuma is underneath it, it doesn't go anywhere. See, it really, it just kind of gets stuck over there. When it's above the beehive, um, it does not go underneath at all. Um, when it's inside, it really doesn't go anywhere except inside the beehive. And when it's in the house, it only affects the house. It happens to affect underneath it, but that's just because it's spreading out from the house itself. Mm. What about the beehive? Maybe we should protect it underneath, underneath it. But the house itself is tummy. Um, if you raise the beehive over, so now the tummy can spread out underneath. And underneath, again, it will be the same din over here. Um, let's take it out over, over. Nothing has no way to spread out, and inside, no way to spread out. Okay, so that's the first four Mishnayos. Now we're, um, yes. Now we're going to turn it back into the regular kind of beehive. We're going to turn it inside. Now it's inside the house. So now, underneath, it makes everything tummy. Uh, even inside the bee, let's go inside and see what happens here. Even inside, because it comes in, spreads inside the house, spreads inside the beehive, goes underneath. Oh, excuse me, this is too tall. 
starts off with mission number five is um, the beehive is below a tevach. So it has no way to spread out underneath. If it's uh, above, it again has no way to spread out. It does affect underneath it because it's a regular beehive now. Um, if it were to go into the house, oop, come back inside. Into the house, it would affect, excuse me, um, are we below or below? Above or below? Does make a difference. Um, and inside, what happens inside the beehive itself? Um, and again, doesn't make a difference if it's above or below. And then you change it to the Bechusa type. Let's put it below a tefach. Change it to the Bechusa type. So now, it, when it's inside the barrel, it does go out into the house, but it has, still has no way to go outside. So it doesn't affect anything out here. How do I get it? I'm stuck. Okay. It does not affect anything out here. Um, if the tuma is in the house, uh, great. The house is tummy and inside the behind. It's doing weird things now. Um, I think I messed it up somewhere. Something's happening to my tuma here. Let's raise it up. Um, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Um, underneath it. Oh, that's inside. Let's go underneath. Underneath. Underneath is like that. And above it. It's supposed to shoot down. I think it's broken. I messed up somewhere. Let's uh, start over. Uh, flip it back inside. Let's see. Inside. Okay. See, it's good. It's good. Um, above a tefach. So then it will spread out everywhere. Here you tell me. And that will be the Bechusa type. Let's um, move the tuma. Move the barrel down. Beehive down. Let me change it. It's now the Bechusa type. So now it does not go above because there's no way to get there. Uh, let's go back inside so we can see what's going on. Hey. And, um, okay, above. Hey, get back here. Uh, above, it's going to be also nothing's going to happen underneath. If it's in the house, where'd it go? If it's in the house, I'll make everything tummy except underneath and above the beehive. And if it's in the beehive itself, oh, see, I lost it again. I don't know what happened to the, to the beam. Um, everything will not be. Everything except what's above and below the beehive. Now, let's raise it above a tavach. Are we the Pachusa type? I think we're the Pachusa type. I'm getting confused. Pachusa type, Pachusa type. Not going anywhere. Regular type does go above. Okay, whatever. I got lost in exactly where we're holding, but okay, so that's the whole kit and caboodle. Now I just want to show you, just, this is just a cool uh, random point. Um, just trying to show how the the setup of the Mishnayas is like binary numbers. So here's the, in this box over here, I have binary numbers. Here's this one, two, four, eight. These are the places that we have the ones unit, we have the two unit, the four, the eight. Instead of what we have or used to in the decimal system, we'll have the, the one unit, the 10 unit, the 100 unit, the 1,000 units. It just means how many of this one unit does it take to make one of the next unit. So in binary, it's just you only get one, zero or one. So you'll have zero ones, zero twos, zero fours. That equals zero. Um, if you have one one, zero twos, zero fours, that's number one because you only have one one. If you have zero ones, one two, so that gives you two. If you have two and one, you get three. If you get only one four, you get four. If you get a four and a one, you get five. If you get a four and a two, you get six. You get a four, a two, and a one, you get seven. The next one is just one eight, but we're not going to do that. So that's these numbers here zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And our peric, hold on, we'll see how this relates to the peric. If you just add one to each of these, you get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm sorry, I should say Mishnah. Um, Mishnah. Uh, so we have three factors we have below or above a tevach, uh, regular or deficient, and we have facing out or facing in. So if we call uh, this row above a tefach. If it's zero, it means it's not above a tefach. If it's one, it is above a tefach. Um, zero can mean it's regular. It's not deficient. A one will mean it is deficient. And facing in, so zero means it's not facing in, meaning it's facing out, and one means it's facing in. So if you follow these parameters, you'll see that that relates to those mishnayos. So the first mishnah is below a tefach, not deficient, facing out, that's one. Let's take make a random mishnah here. Mishnah four is it's above a tefach, it is deficient and it is facing out, etc. Okay, so that's just cool. Okay, this is the third base of English. Uh, let me 
told you this is the uh here's the entrance from the east um you go into there's like four big rooms over there is the spayah the kodesh here's the time and let's test the map oh there we are again okay and here we go I'm walking around everything is to scale uh, he's not walking and here's the time on this side time on this side um no roofs over here really uh, that's cool that's nice uh, that's a one over there big room thing over there is going into the uh, zara there's another ton thing in the side ton on the side this is the mizbeach okay and here's your ramp and there you go look at that you got the little corners there a little space for the corner walk east entrance no that's the north entrance south this is west there's a uh, little side entrances everywhere don't know where everything goes uh, whoa where does this take me to whoa ah. and it goes all the way around anyway mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and here's the uh, let's name another side entrance to the time thing there and Kodesh with your menorah and Kodesh Kodeshim there you have it great Terry Bismuth and Dune 2 great sky